sure enough, I came to Matamoros. But before that, at Monterrey, I was also shining shoes in bars where I saw things that a maybe 12, 13 year old boy shouldn't be witnessing, like fights and shootings and stabbings and things like that. And I still remember those times. But when I came to Matamoros to work in Brownsville, I felt I had graduated from college, that I had a degree, because all the things that I had, that I had uh, experienced. So when I went to work in Brownsville, I said, I said, yeah, it's a bad boy. I worked there for three months, and I got off work, I remember very well, at 11 o'clock at night. At 11 o'clock at night, there were no longer any buses to go back to my tia's house in Matamoros. So I had to walk. I walked quite, quite, quite a bit at night going to my, my tia's house. And I did that for three months until I finally decided that I needed to do something else besides that. And there was, she had a neighbor that came from Houston that offered me to take me to Houston if I wanted to go to Houston. Because that's where they came from. That's where they were from, Houston. Of course, as I accepted to come because I wanted to go, I didn't want to go back to Monterrey. So if they had been in New York, I would have ended up in New York. But I ended up in Houston. And if luck would have it, I would have ended up in Kingwood. But even, even then, for me, it was very difficult when I was, I was only 14 years old and I didn't have a formal education. I didn't know how to speak English. I didn't know how, I didn't know anybody when I arrived in Houston. So I suffered a lot as far as, uh, uh, you know, my, my own personal emotions and things like that. There were nights where I cried. There were nights where there was no one I could talk to or even uh, share my feelings with. Through all those uh, hardships that I went through, today, today I'm able to understand a lot of the things that are going on right now in the world, especially in the Hispanic population. After being in Houston for a year, that I stayed with the family that I, they were very, very distant relatives. They kept me there for a year, and they helped me along. They said, we're gonna put you in school. But I wanted, also wanted to work because I came to Houston with not so much to study, but to work. So I couldn't send money back home to my parents. After a year of being in Houston, I learned to speak English. When it took me one year to learn. I knew that if I was gonna make it in Houston, or the US or in Texas, I needed to know how to communicate with people. And that is one thing that I see today, that all the Hispanics come into, into the US. They don't embrace the American culture. They stay, they, they stay behind and they try to bring the, their flag with them, speak Spanish, and listen to Spanish television, listen to Spanish radio. And that's part of the problem, in my opinion. But that's another story. After, after they put me to school, I moved out of the house after the first year. And I started work, working as a dishwasher. And I said, after that, I became a boss boy. I, after that, I became a waiter. When I became a waiter, I started having some money in my pockets because we had tips. And I always had a lot of cash. But I never forgot to send money back home to my mom. When I went to high school, which I think was high school 19, in the mid-1960s, I graduated in 1968. By then I had a car, I had one apartment. I didn't have a girlfriend yet because I met my wife. <laughs> <laughs> but all along there was people that helped me along the way too. It was just awesome. I, by the grace of God, I am where I am today. Well, how was it that, that I ended up where I ended up after going through all my trials? all those things that the Lord put in front of me. After we got married in 1968, my wife and I, 
Uh, we started having kids right away. Our son was born, our first son was born almost a year after we got married. And there we go again, struggling, as every other marriage does, as their family is growing. I remember having two jobs. I remember that the, that the draft board called me to go to, go to Vietnam. I appealed that. And I went before the board and I was, I was asking, could I be any help with Because I had two kids and I had two jobs and I had a lot of hardship at home, so I stayed. So I never went to Vietnam. But I was drafted twice to go. As our family grew, we started experiencing you know, some things together more. You know. And I give her a lot of credit because I learned a lot. You think my story is, uh, is one that we can talk about. Hers is you know, just as, as good or better than mine. So maybe one day we'll be able to hear hers. When I was a waiter, there was this tall building, downtown Houston. It was called Humble Oil and Planning Companies. And I say to myself, you know, that tall building there, I'm gonna work there one day. Yeah, so I went to apply. I put on a tie, uh, the coat that I had at the time. And I went to the lobby of the building and asked the security guard there, I need to apply for a job. And he said, well, you need to go to this floor and then you can apply there. Sure enough, I did that, and I went over and filled it out. So as I was doing, doing the application, he had questions like, how many words can I type in a minute? And I put, 100. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I need a shorthand, I said, yeah, I know, sure. <laughs> so I turned it in, and three months go by, they never called me. And then after that, after those three months, I went back and checked on my application. And they told me that they didn't have anything for me. So I tell them, you guys haven't called me, why? He said, we don't have anything for you. Something opens up, we'll let you know. Later, six months go by, okay? But every Monday of those six months, I would check my application, my top building. I, still, I was still a waiter. I was still making money, I still had cash. So I was okay. I had my own cars, everything. Was, but now I was, I was planting the seed for something for the future. One Monday, when I go in there, they said, we've been waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> so they sent me to the mail room for working as part-time, as I still was still in high school, uh, for all the oil money companies. I remember a lot of my boss used to be Sam, Sam Dubois. Never forget that man, he gave me the opportunity. He said, you are the best mail room clerk we ever had. We want to keep you. When I graduated from high school in 1968, 